This is video number four of our series creating a full week SNC template. This video will focus on the calculation of volume load. To do so, we need to learn a new formula. On the refresh tab, I've put in a little grid which has reps and load. If we were to calculate volume load, we would do so simply by multiplying reps times the prescribed load for our five sets, and we would sum that. And that would tell us that the volume load, or the planned volume load, is 2625. A formula called sum product is forgotten a little bit now in Excel terms. It used to be used for almost everything by hardcore Excel users. Now it's been replaced by other formulas, but nevertheless, in the case of plan volume load, it is extremely useful. Some product requires you to enter two arrays. In our case, it's all of the reps and all of the load. If I do so, it gives us the same outcome as we got with all the previous workings that we did. So some product is going to be used in our template sheet now. I have added a column here, column E. This column, we're going to put in 1, 2, 3, 4 plan volume load calculations for our four weeks. I'm going to type some product, select reps, comma, and select load, close brackets, and enter. Rather than copying and pasting, I'm just going to manually do each one of these. And so those four numbers tell us the progression of plan volume load across the four weeks. Now these are also going to have uh, implications further down the track. So as I have previously, I'm going to put if error around all of these. Once I've done that, I should be able to copy down to the next exercise. Before I do the rest, I'm just going to click and check it out. First week looks good, and the third week looks good. So the use of those relative exercises saved us quite a bit of time redoing each of these formulas. And if I delete out this input on exercise 8, we can see that the if error function has saved us. So we now have plan volume load calculated in column E. And what we can look at doing is aggregating that data into an overall session plan volume load calculation. Now you may have noticed earlier in the lessons that there are some hidden rows in this file. I'm going to unhide them now. I'm going to show you the plan that I have in place. And so I want to be able to create a whole lot of summary information that we can store in a database. Therefore, we can have a history and record of athletes' uh, plan volume loads and exercises used and things like that. We've used variables a few times, and I'm going to use another one now. This time, it's simply the athlete name. I'm going to put V for variable and I'm going to type four week name. The reason I put four week name is that you may in fact have more than one template in your file. I'd encourage you to have session templates, possibly even uh, six or eight week templates for the off season, for example. And so four week might just be one of your templates and therefore to specify which name it is could be useful. And so now that we've got that, I want to start filling in 
this grid. I want to have a row in the database for each week that we program for this athlete. As we move along, there's a few columns that we can't fill in just yet, and I want to wait a little while, but we can certainly fill in some of it. If we look at total PVL for week one, we should be able to calculate that. That equals a sum of these values. And if I drag that down, that will update automatically and I can check that out by clicking inside the edit bar and we can see that week three has been selected. So once again, our referencing system is helping us by auto completing some of these things. Similarly, what is the total sets for week one? I'm going to use a formula here, which we've seen before, but haven't necessarily used. I'm going to do count if. I'm going to count this entire column, locking down the row numbers so that we can drag it down, but only if it's greater than zero. So we've got 40 right now, but if I delete one of these, changes to 39. That's because a blank cell is not greater than 0. Now if I drag this down, they'll all say 40. The thing I need to do is use my formula edit bar to drag these across to the other weeks. Now they all say 40 now because we're just using sort of perfect data, but it may be that there's significantly less than that. To get total reps, I want to do another little trick. These formula are referencing cells at the moment. If I do a find and replace, it's remembered our previous settings, so I'm just going to overtype them. I want to take away the equal sign and replace it with a hat. Copy the cells, paste it in the total reps and the average intensity columns. Now I'm going to select all of those and turn them back into formulas. Sometimes when you copy formulas, that cell referencing uh, updates things for you and you end up taking a lot of time just going back and editing each one, as we've found out so far. Sometimes that's useful and sometimes it's not. What I want to do now is simply go sum if. If we do sum if, it tells us the sum of the reps column. And that's great, that's what we're looking for, total reps. So I could manually go down and over type count if with sum if, or once again I could use control H and replace count with sum. And for this next one, I want to replace count with average. And I think what I'll do is put a decimal place on there. So we can see what the average intensity is as identified by the number of reps per set. Now I could convert that to a percentage like this. What's interesting here is that it has overwritten the initial part of my formula. So I'm not happy about that. I'm going to escape out and start that again. This time I'm going to scoop out this part before deleting and starting fresh. 
I want to look in the intensity column of the rep intensity table. And I want to match the number we just calculated in the same table but in the reps column. This time I want to do an approximate match. And so that's going to give us the, a best guess of what the average intensity is, 81%. I personally think a rep number is fine, so I'm just going to leave that as it was at 7. Exercise category is going to be easy for us because we've got a variable for that. And as soon as we type V and E, we get a list that's starting to uh, question what we might want to look at. We're looking for this exact number here. So I can drag that down. Now because I've got a narrow column, we can't see much, so I'll just drag that out a little bit. So all of these things are really easy now because we've got our variables programmed in. You might have been wondering why I was wasting my time doing it. Now this might make a little bit of sense. This one we might have to do a little bit of direct uh, cell linking or we could create another variable. So we're looking for week one, exercise one, plan volume load. And I can copy that down and get all four weeks. So I'm going to continue this whole table and fill it in. And I can do that quite easily by copying and pasting everything other than the PVL cell reference. And just as I have previously, I'm going to use find and replace on my selected cells. And just using X1, X8. And so with all of those columns now updated, I might like to build a little dashboard panel or something like that to give me some assistance while I write my programs. So as I'm building, I can see what my plan volume loads are. For example, I might like an overall plan volume load chart. Just make that a little bit easier to read. I want this to be nice and small so I don't lose too much real estate. So that's not too bad of a plan volume load chart. I can copy that. Paste that next door, and for example do something like total reps. All I have to do is drag that across and add new labels. To make it different I'll just change the colour on it. and perhaps one more I might like intensity and so I've now got a little graphic that gives me a feel for how my intensities reps and overall plan volume load 
uh, tracking across the four weeks when I'm making my decisions. And so, for example, if I change that to a different scheme, I can see that intensity, reps, and plan volume load are changing in front of my eyes. So I might not want that, and I can tinker a bit further with things if I choose to do so.